Hello and welcome to my video. Right, this is a, a back to my big size. I've been do, using smaller boards, uh, but this is my normal size, which is 80 by 60 centimeters. And um, it's sort of, um, I was inspired to do this by one of my students. You may know, you may not know, you may not care, but I have a, I have a group on Facebook uh, which one of my students started uh, for me, actually, um, called Students of Stuart Davis, which is very flattering, very nice, thank you. And it's doing quite well. We've got about, we, well, we've got over 500 members. And um, one of my students painted a picture, and uh, it was very nice, but it, uh, I'll tell you, what, what made me, what inspired me was the way the picture changed. Uh, she held it up to the camera so I could see it on Zoom. By the way, this is Ultramarine and Payne's Grey. And um, because there was a window next to her, the, the light from the window flooded the picture and it sort of, uh, because of the automatic exposure, it made her picture suddenly go dark. And I preferred it dark, funnily enough. So uh, it sort of inspired me to paint a picture that's um, dark. <laughs> um, with just a little bit of light down on the la the landscape here. I've done this before, uh, and it's sort of quite effective, but I'm going to really let rip on the um, sky before I do the landscape, because I like doing skies, and I'm sure that a lot of people are here because they like skies. So that's what I'm doing. Now, if, if I appear in the picture, which I try not to, you may notice I've got something on my glasses. It's my microphone, and I've figured that um, the sound quality is better if the microphone travels with my mouth, if that makes sense. The thing is, I find, because I'm, when I'm teaching, because I'm looking in all different directions, um, when I turn away from the microphone, sometimes people lose what I'm saying. This way, with it on my glasses, um, where my mouse goes, it goes. So you're going to hear me whether you want to or not. And uh, so that hopefully will give you better volume. Now, uh, I'm adding royal blue and Payne's grey into the mix. Get a bit in there as well. So it's very untidy to start with. Nothing, um, nothing particularly, uh, nothing at all worth looking at here. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite, at the moment, I'm not quite the rule of thirds. I'm, um, I'm below 50% for the landscape, but I'm, in fact, I'm gonna, I might bring that down even more. Something like that. Probably. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. This is one of those, um, it's slightly, you know, I mean, apart from, I'll, I'll, I'll put a little picture of the, um, my students painting up on the screen there and uh, just to give you an idea and, and I'm making it small because the um, the quality of the photograph isn't awfully good but you, you may get the feel of uh, what's going on okay so there's a few bits of paint shoved on there uh, as I said, it's a mess. They always start as a mess uh, because they have to. Everything has to start with a mess. So let's just smear a bit of that around. Now, I, I'm not one of these people that put a tone over uh, the painting completely. Some people do that. I, I've never seen the point uh, because that's not what I want to see. I don't want to put a colour on there that I'm continually fighting. I'd rather put on roughly what I want, and then fight that, so that uh, I don't get overwhelmed. Okay, so I've got really strong sort of movement up in the sky there. Sometimes when I'm... Uh, I, I, I'm going to apologise, because I can't help it. Um, I will get in the way. I'll try not to, but I'm sure I will. Uh, but I'll, and I'm sure some of you shout at the video and say, get out of the way. But 
just uh, when I get painting, I get a little bit carried away. Okay, so there's a few sort of strong. Well, I think at the moment as strong as they're going to get. Um, sort of shapes in the sky. And I'm going to intensify that a bit by getting some Payne's Grey just on the edge of this piece of paper and just shoving it up here. See how quickly it disappears? You pet, the thing is, if you use black, black will hold its own on there quite, quite well. But Payne's Grey, it sort of um, it gets absorbed, uh, which is fine. Don't worry, mind that. Uh, there we go. That's quite yeah. You see now, it, even though I've got all these shapes in the in the grey, you know, like little blob here, blob there, that sort of thing, it doesn't matter. That's gonna it's gonna get pushed around even more. Let's see what we can do along here. Let's have a a little bit down there. See, almost completely absorbed into the um, ultramarine. That's absolutely fine. Where did I put the bin? There it is. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to use a big brush already. I usually uh, hold this until I start putting white on, but I just want to lose a few streaks. This is my first video for quite some time now. Um, in fact, I think the last one I put up was early February. Um, and there's been quite a long break. Uh, but I'm sort of feeling slightly back on form now. I'm feeling a bit icky. That was my um, dicky ticker. I've got a dicky ticker. Best way to think of it. Nothing serious, just a slightly dicky ticker. Um, and what, what, I'll tell you what's interesting about having a dicky ticker is you've got to come to a decision. What are you going to do? Lie around worrying all day? Or are you going to just sort of... I don't know. What, what else can you do? You know? You can either you can either lie around worrying or you can just sort of get on with stuff and I think getting on with stuff is probably the best way. There are days and if you have the same sort of condition when you when you really can't do anything and I think you should listen you should listen to your body. If you have to if you have to spend some horizontal time do it. Don't fight it. Fight it to a certain extent but not to the point where it makes you more ill. Okay, so we're getting some quite interesting shapes in there now. Bit of mystery. It's funny. It's a funny thing, mystery. How do you get mystery in a painting? What is this? What is it that you do that gets the M word into a painting? I honestly don't know. I I uh, sort of have you know theories, but I think it's to do with movement. It's not necessarily colour. It's the movement of objects and the, the, the way you play contrasts off against each other. I, I'm sure that makes absolutely no sense at all. Do you know, sometimes, notice this, sometimes I don't make any sense at all. Um, what, what can I say? I don't, you know, I can show you, I can do it. I can't really tell you what it is. Sorry, I'm, I'm sort of faffing about thinking about this now because I wasn't intending to sort of go into that sort of uh, subject on here, but I started it, so I'll try and finish it. Um, mystery. Hmm. OK, with a, with a lot of fancy editing, I've chopped out a whole load of um, waffle because I was clearly talking rubbish. And uh, I honestly, the answer to the um, question I posed to myself is uh, I don't know how to explain mystery. I can paint it, but I don't know how to explain it. Right, the bit you've missed um, is I added some royal blue 
along here with a palette knife. And uh, I only put it on with a palette knife just to sort of show that I can put it on with a palette knife. Uh, there was no deep and meaningful reason. And, um, it, and it, it's a quick way of doing it. You, and also you do get some quite nice flat effects, which is something I wanted. So um, this is the main brush that I've used for the sky. Uh, just a reminder, it's uh, ultramarine blue, uh, Payne's grey, and um, there's probably a bit of royal blue chucked in there somewhere. Um, and I'm just going to sort of start mangling it around a little bit, bring the two together. The landscape will go up into the blue soon. So this is this is um this is how loose you want to keep it. Really keep it loose. Just sort of you know push the paint around. Be relaxed as possible because you know as I always say it's only it's only paint. And um, there we are. Right. So uh, up here this is just white board showing through, uh, and I'm going to sort of fiddle with that in a minute. And I think, I, in fact, I probably, why not, let's start early. Let's get some white on there with a palette knife. Um, so that's the one I just used. Obviously give it a wipe, it's got some blue on it. Sorry you missed that bit, but I was, I was trying to explain how you get mystery. And I think it's one of those things that you either, you can either do it, or you don't, or you can't. Um, but you try explaining it to somebody, it's not that easy. So uh, rather than all this waffle I was coming out with, I think it was better if I just sort of edited it. So here we are, here's some white paint. And useful for people to know this, I think, um, is that if you, if you start just shoveling white paint on with a palette knife, you can get some quite nice soft cloud effects without even using a brush. Just the nature of uh, a palette knife. If you sort of, you know, rub it into the into the paint, you will get a, a, a you know the paints will blend together like so, and you'll get a nice soft cloud effect. So I'm not worried about extreme white on here at the moment. I'm just putting on some tones. So if I start with my darker tones, I know they're sort of light, but if it, it's <laughs> it's a darker version of white. Um, and then I put white on top of that, it'll, it'll have a bit of sparkle. Looking in my viewfinder, that looks quite white. It'll be whiter, or more white. So, um, titanium white, and just chuck it on. And be a little bit crazy about where you put it. That's, you know, always remember, clouds Clouds are quite insane. Jump about all over the place. So, um, yes, where was I? I can't remember. Maybe I should just paint and play music. There are times when I think it might be better. But anyway. So, uh, I'm painting on... Oh, yeah. Did I, yeah I to, I've given you the size, but it's just um, plywood. Uh, usual stuff, although I have to say, in France, at the moment, my local shop where I get this stuff, it's called Akumi, uh, they don't have any. This was the last piece. And uh, I um, guess I was lucky to get this. And I've got, a, I've got a student coming here in a few weeks, so I've got to find another supplier. I've got a plywood problem. Okay, so sky, a, dr a dramatic sky, my goodness. What should we do to make it dramatic? I don't know. The older I get, have you heard the saying? You know, I had a, I had a birthday quite recently. So I'm um, 71 now. I can't believe I'm 71. I'm absolutely convinced, you know, that, that there's a mistake somewhere on my, my birth certificate. I can't be 71. Most days I feel like I'm, I don't know, in my late teens, early 20s. I do get the odd day when I feel like I'm about 400, but 
Yeah, I'm sure you know what I'm saying. We all, we all probably go through this to some extent. So let's see, what's going to make this mysterious? Yeah, anyway, oh yeah, what's I saying? I have a birthday. Um, and uh, thank you to all those people on Facebook who sent me birthday wishes. I think uh, that was quite uh, amazing. Never had so many good wishes. Okay, so there's a little bit of sun with clouds. I'm thinking, you know, I don't, I don't do this often. I have done it before in a few videos, but um, a little bit of red in the sky, but not what you'd expect as a, the usual type of red. Um, it's actually a little bit of red ochre. There we are, you probably can't see that because the light's reflecting off it. Um, a stain, a little hint of red ochre on there. Just push that in, in a few places. Very small amount. It may even get lost. Although I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to put a bit more on. It has an interesting effect, I think. Maybe that's a mysterious colour. Maybe there are colours that are more mysterious than others. I don't think bright yellow is particularly mysterious. Maybe, it, maybe it's down to the darkness. Maybe darkness is the thing. And of course, darks like black, um, which is obviously the ultimate dark, I suppose. Um, and red, red and black are on the same colour wavelength, so um, maybe that's something to do with it. Okay, so there's some interesting... I use that word too much sometimes, I think. Interesting. What I find interesting and what the rest of the human population finds interesting is possibly quite... Um, there's quite a gap. Anyway, so let's see, what should we do now? Let's get a bit of... Um, in fact, I'm going to get a bit more... a bit more Payne's Grey. And where should we put it? Let's put it over here. Yeah, that's nice. like that. Nice and solid. OK, this is getting mysterious now. I'm frightened. But I'll carry on. Hope I'm not in the way too much. Check my camera. Yeah. Yeah, this microphone thing. I'm sure I look like I probably look like the Borg. You know, if you're a Star Trek fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, it does seem to work quite well. The reason the, the reason I had problems before is first of all, I you know it's a clip-on microphone, and I shoved it right up underneath my beard and of course every time I turn my head my beard scraped across it um, so that wasn't going to work awfully well uh, and then I put it on my um, my you know on my top if I can get in the way I put it up here there and of course then it got folded you know the microphone got folded into the material that didn't work and then I thought hmm it's a lapel microphone. Let's try it on the lapel. So I put it on my lapel, and uh, of course when I turn my head left, uh, if I put it on the right, then the sound decreased. Uh, so anyway, it's on my spectacles. So there we go. Now let's see what we can do with this. Big brush again, just to get some smoothing done. Okay, that blends that down quite nicely. Okay, let's do a few wild things up here. Don't worry if you do get the odd streak. Depends how what sort of pressure you're using. I mean, when I'm doing the final uh, fiddling with the sky, I would do this very gently. Uh, and I'll also use a new brush. This has been through the um, been through the ringer a bit. This one. Uh, so there's a few um, tufts of bristle that are causing it to scratch, but I don't really mind. Because they will go. 
Like, like that. No, uh, um, yeah, okay, well, it's a chemtrail, okay, which I don't, certainly don't want. But it's not the end of the world if you do that. You can just sort of take it away. Okay. Okie dokie. Now, um, what else should we talk about? I'm just going to keep going with this and see, you know, see how interesting I can make it. Uh, I, I just would, I'd just like to sort of put a word out for the scammers out there. You know, give it a rest, would you? Uh, I, I get these scammers asking me if I'd like to put an advert in my video for some gaming site. OK, yeah, right. Of course, the, the, the people don't work for the gaming site. They say they do, but um, they don't. Um, and I think to myself, what on earth has... A young person who's in, well, not always young, I mean, could be an older person as well. What on earth, um, what's the relationship between a, a, an old guy like me painting a picture like this and some gaming site? You know, it's just um, so obvious that you're scamming. Anyway, don't bother, because I don't, I don't run private adverts on my, in other words, I don't take... Um, Sponsorship. Nobody sponsors my videos. There, it's, you know, I just don't, I'm not interested. Um, it's. I'm sure a lot of people who have mega um, channels, you know, where they have millions of viewers, they get uh, genuine people wanting to um, sponsor their videos. But I think someone like me, it's just not going to happen. So I'm not going to worry about it. There we are. We've got a we've got a nice mysterious sky coming here, and I think quite happy with the top part. I think that's working quite well. So I'm just going to shift the camera a bit, and you can see how I'm going to um, relate it to the ground. Okay, so there's the that's the absolute bottom of the painting. I think. Yep. There we go. Now. I've got this blue streak, right, so it's not going to look like a blue streak, it's going to change. I'm going to use um, a smallish brush, uh, a small brush that's um, never been used, funnily enough, and I'm going to just use my usual magic colours that I always try to use in a painting, and that's a bit of sap green and red ochre. But I'm going to put some other colours in it as well. I'm going to start off with um, Payne's Grey, Royal Blue, Sap Green. And you, won't, you probably won't see much difference from my normal Sap Green Red Ochre, uh, except it'll be just slightly um, warmer, I suppose. Let's see what happens anyway. Just mixing it up here, so I might, I'll probably cut all this rubbish out. OK, so what I, what I want to do is bring the land to the sky. Um, and it's going to be a dark land. However, there will be a pool of light somewhere in here. OK, I'm going to look at what's happening in the sky. It may be that because that line up there, which you can't see, but there is a, a cloud up that way, <laughs> and it's got a, an angle like this. So maybe the light will be over this side. don't know yet. Just play it by ear. So, let's see what we can do. This is something I really like doing. This is the, this is the bringing the land to the sky. And... Um, it's a sort of gradual thing. You see how they mix together and you get interesting things start to happen. I've got no agenda for the, for the land. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm just sort of doing it to see actually what happens because I don't know. You know as much as I do. One thing I will do though, I'm just going to get some um, yellow ochre and I'm just going to put some Let's say here, 
a little bit of yellow ochre. It's not a lot, but it's nothing, nothing uh, spectacular. Let's just try and make it a bit more interesting by putting it a bit more, putting a bit more on rather. Okay, so there's some yellow ochre. And how am I going to make that interesting? Hmm. Good question. I'm going to get a piece of paper, just the standard stuff. Do I need to show you a piece of paper? No, you've probably seen paper before. Um, I'm going to dip it in some oil. And then I'm just going to do this. Like so. In fact, a little bit more. Let's give it a little bit of elbow. Okay. Stage one. Stage one of I don't know how many stages. Because, um, as I said, there's no plan. Let's just uh, play with paint, see what happens. And uh, if you can learn to do this, if you can convince yourself that it'll be fun, maybe it will. So there, let's have some light green, just there. Do you know, I, I was thinking the other day, why do I paint like this? Um, I think it's because of my past life, so to speak, my career as a scribbler. So if you're a visualizer, which is what I was, not, not, I wasn't, didn't do that all my life in my, my career, but um, I did a lot of it where you would just be paid to think of ideas and scribble them as fast as possible. Before computers, you had to actually produce uh, a drawing of something to impress a client. The good old days. I mean, it was fun, actually, but uh, uh, not the most fun I've ever had, but it was, it was interesting. And I think it actually um, put me in good stead for doing this sort of stuff. Prepared me a bit, I suppose. I have to say, I, you know, I would never have imagined when I was younger in my life, that I would end up um, in a very ancient cottage in France showing people how to paint uh, on a computer. Just, um, you know, how on earth did that all happen? I'm glad it did, though. I really enjoy uh, computers. Let's just blur that a little bit in there. Uh, plus the fact that you can, um, you know, you can get to so many people uh, with a computer. I know that, um, you know, I, I've got a lot of subscribers. It doesn't mean to say they're all watching. They just, I'm sure a lot of them have forgotten they subscribed. Um, but it would be great if all 100... 41,000 um, were actually watching, but it's never, that probably isn't going to happen. Um, sorry, I'm just mixing up some colours here. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, not everybody's watching. It'd be nice if they did. One of the, you know, one of the hardest things to do, and I, I think I... Definitely, according to my statistics, I do have trouble with it. That's maintaining people's attention because I think with something like this, you either you're either going to be a painter or you're not, or maybe you want to paint. You you have no idea where to begin. I don't know, um, but it's not everybody's cup of tea, and it, uh, because it's quite a long process, I don't know how long. I have no idea, in fact, how long I've been painting, but. Uh, I'm sure some people just fade away because um, they, it's, uh, you, you know, unless you're really into it, you're not going to concentrate. And people just uh, drift off. Anyway, 
But if you're still here, thank you. Glad you are. And if you want me to thank you in person, why don't you um, sign up for one of my Zoom classes? You might enjoy it. So it's a real. I'm not just saying this because you know, obviously, I do it for a living. But um, I, you know, I paint for an hour and then we chat. And the chatting is, it's not like, ha ha, you know, I've painted the picture, I've got your money now, clear off. It's none of that. I actually enjoy talking to the students afterwards. And usually we talk for up to about two hours, depending on um, my my energy levels to some extent, but also. Um, and other people's energy levels, but also whether I need to go to the local shop because I'm in France. Most of my students are in America and um, it's a different time. So uh, it's evening here. Let's see what we can do with this lot. It's, uh, uh, yeah, oh, that's getting interesting. Um, Let's see, what can we do? What can we do to that? I think I'll use a smaller brush in a minute. Let's just get some shapes in there. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, it's a good laugh. And uh, we talk about all kinds of stuff. It's mostly about painting, but uh, it usually ends up just chatting about every, anything and everything, really. And if you are a Patreon or patron via my Patreon page, um, you get a, um, for a certain amount, I have no idea what the figures are, but um, you can get, uh, depending on how much you donate, you get money off the price of the lessons. And at a certain amount, you don't pay anything, you just get a link. And um, there we are. And you can just sort of turn up. Okay, anyway, that's... Um, the wonder of computers. It's just, I'm just um, playing here. I can't really tell you why I'm doing these things. I just get the feeling that that's where the paint needs to go. I'm going to do a lot more work over there in a minute. It's a little bit flat. Uh, the landscape's a bit flat at the moment. I think I'm, I need a hill or two in there. I'm just going to move the camera um, back very slightly and up a bit. Maybe I should move down a bit. Oh no, I think that way. Okay, so let's see what we can do to get some of the elusive mystery into this painting. I think we need to do something like this. You see, because, because I brought the sky down to there, doesn't mean say it has to stay there. I can take the land up a bit. And in fact, let's get some more contrast in there. So a little bit of, a little bit of Payne's grey. Might even add a little bit of blue, just for the heck of it, just to see what happens. Let's have, um, let's have a bit of a shape there. Let's have something going on here. Don't know what it is, but it's there. And let's do no idea where this place is. I'd really like to go there, but I uh, don't know where it is. No idea. It's one of the things I really like about uh, art, you know, painting pictures. Like this. You make you make your own world. Where, and sort of put whatever you want in it. Let's have that shape. I think that shape there could be interesting. Don't know what that is. Could be a bunch of trees. Let's get some more green into it. I think we'll strengthen that just a bit. OK, 
Okay. So what I'm doing really here now, I'm making shape and texture that hopefully will start to resemble something. And what it resembles is, to some extent, up to the viewer. Because um, I've never been here. I don't know where it is. Somewhere in my head, I suppose. Maybe. If there's anything in my head at all. Some days I'm quite sure there isn't. So, but as you can see, you have to fearlessly put shapes and colour into your picture. Just sort of, you know, at a touch. Don't overdo anything. Just sort of add things until it resembles something. Let's take away the last bit of white board here. Okay, that's pretty well it. Okay, so we're starting to um, start to get a bit of, um, uh, I don't know, whatever it is. Well, whatever it is, I'm starting to get it. Uh, and it's sort of, this is the point where a painting starts to work for me. Uh, I can't really tell you why. I think it's a certain, it's like, you know, when a, when a child <laughs> pushes around mud pies, eventually they will look like something. I think there's, the, I heard something years ago, there's something about a bunch of um, chimpanzees and it, they gave them a typewriter and after a long time of these chimps playing with a the typewriter, they actually ended up writing something but purely by accident. I have no idea what they wrote, maybe it was give me a banana, but I don't know. Now, so we've got some nice distant hills over there. And I've got, so I've picked up some of that yellow ochre on the brush here. So I think I might um, see if I can just deposit a little bit of it, maybe um, just there. Just because I can. And let's see, oh yeah, okay, right, that's it's still coming off. It's quite an interesting colour, yellow ochre. It's, um, when you look at it in the tube, it looks like, um, it looks like the colour of clothing you would never wear in public. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't, anyway. When you put it on a painting, though, it starts to sort of sparkle a bit and have a bit of zing, like this. Let's just get some shape. Let's just put something there. Why not? It's just a shape. Let me uh, show you more of the bottom of the painting. Okay. Now, what I like, uh, I don't know whether I've got mystery yet, but I've got, I think there's something about it. Um, I'm really liking this area here. It sort of, um, certainly brings the eye toward that area. Now, that dark shape, which are obviously trees, uh, I think I need to sort of um, increase that a little bit. So I will. Same brush, a couple of wipes. And I'm going to get some um, sap green and chuck in a bit more Payne's grey. I might even need to squirt a bit more. We're almost at panic stations here because this is this is the only Payne's grey I've got left. Uh, normally I buy really big tubes. Um, I, I've just used it up. So I'm, I'm down to this. Uh, I'm going to have to go to the uh, shop quite soon. And it's one of those, it's a really nice colour Payne's grey. Um, it's a good way of darkening things without going too black. I haven't used black. Oh, last time I used black would have been early 70s, probably. Right, so I want to make a bit more of a statement with this lump of trees here. Okay, so we will. Let's just keep that little bit in there and let's have another bit there. Okay. 
there are, there's definitely going to be two stages to this painting. Uh, this is going to be, obviously, <laughs> I'm going to state the obvious big time here. This is stage one. Stage two will be to darken it even more. If you uh, can imagine that, um, I will darken that right down so that it, the sky and the land will almost blend or meld together. I might do a bit now. Let's have a little bit of... Let's have a little bit more darkness there on that hill. Am I in the way? Probably. Let's, uh, I'm going to change your point of view slightly. OK, so, um, yeah, let's just take that up to the sky a bit. Let's have a little bit of a sweep down there. Have I got a reflection? I hate it when I get reflections. I don't think I have. Or well, if I have, it's not too bad. OK. Sort of interesting. It's not quite ravishing yet, but we'll try and do that. Let's get some more shapes there. Let's bring that down a little bit into the into the shadow lens. There we go. So we've got this slightly reddish colour through here. Do I want that? Do I want to change it? I think I do. I think I want to just get a bit of green into it. And I'm going to be putting on more, more yellow ochre in a minute. OK, that's coming along quite well. This is a, I'm just going to put this picture on the screen uh, now. Um, this is one that I did a uh, similar technique, well exactly, the, why do I say similar? Exactly the same technique, making it up as I go along. And uh, I did this a few years ago. Uh, this is the same sort of way that my brain is working on this painting. Um, in other words, keep fiddling and fiddling and fiddling. But be, be positive, you know, when you put something in, be as positive as you can about the type of shape that you make. I just think that needs to be down like that. That's better. Let's have that colour coming down here, across there. Is it actually anything? It's not really, it's, it's just, just shapes. I don't know what it is. It's things. OK, so let's see, what should we do here? Let's have, um, I think we'll have a little bit of a line across there. Like so. Slight camera adjustment again. I'm really bad at forgetting to move the camera. OK. OK, so keep in mind, you see, as I'm working through this, all I'm doing is adding lights and darks to the, uh, to the landscape. I'm trying to captivate people. Now, because I've got that there, I think, sometimes, not always, I think, I need one here, and the reason I want it is because I like the reaction you get with the light and the dark. See that little bit of contrast just there? It sort of adds to the um, twinkle, twinkle value. Maybe that's maybe that's going to be my 2023 word. I'm fat. I like these sausage trees. I'm surrounded by woods like this. It's like, um, it's like they planted these sausage trees everywhere. Anyway, OK. So th this may be almost as far as I'm going to go on this today, although I, I think I will go up to the sky in a minute and just do a little bit of fiddling there. But we're, we're getting to the point where I'm sort of quite happy. Now, um, this is a, a filbert brush. I'm just going to use this. 
in a couple of places. Um, just to take paint away, actually. I've got, uh, there's, a, there's so much paint on there, I think to get it off with paper might be a bit messy now, but I can, I can do this. in places like that, just to add a bit of light underneath the trees. There we are, a little bit there. And in fact, I think we'll have, I'll have something there. I'm going to just sort of put in a few sort of slightly domed shapes. And a few more. Again, a little bit of Payne, Payne's grey and sap green. Okay, let's have, um, let's have something here. I think we should have something there. And there. Don't ask me why, I just know. And I don't know how I know. I think it's just... Uh, I sort of know it'll be more interesting if I put them in rather than leave them out. And I'm going to have one there too. They're just thingies. There we go, there's another thingy there. Let's just give that a little bit more of a bulge there. Okay. Right. Okay, I think that's it for now. As I said, I will come back to this quite soon and um, add a glaze to it so that um, I can tone it down even more. While the, uh, a little hint though, when you're doing something like this, uh, before you stop painting, look at it and look for the bits that are a little bit um, untidy. So, for instance, that, that's a little bit untidy there. I can't really tell you why. I don't know why. I just feel it, I think. Um, so I'm just going to put a... Just hit it and make it slightly more horizontal there. Okay. Right, and then it's a little bit vague there still. So I think I'll just um, put a little bit more darkness in there. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so I'm going to stop there, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. hope you've learned something. If you really like this, uh, please don't be... Uh, uh, don't hold yourself back if you want to hit the subscribe button. If you want to be a patron, my Patreon link is below. And, if you want, and also there's a link for my Zoom classes. So, uh, yep, thank you, and... Um, I'll see you next time. Although, I know what I'm going to do. I should have done this. Don't go yet. I'm still here. Uh, the only thing I wanted to do before you go is um, to just get a little bit of white. I mean, I could do this. I could, I could add this... Uh, in the next stage, but uh, I think I want to do it now. This area here, it's got quite a nice lot of tones and things going on in it, but I think I just want to um, string it across a little bit and just add a few of those, which I will go over with a big brush in a moment. Okay, so that's now turned blue. Let's get a little bit of fresh white on it. And I just want to tickle these a bit without getting in the way. Da -da 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 -da, off the edge, like so. Nothing spectacular uh, yet. <laughs> Hopefully they'll become 
slightly more spectacular in a moment. Now this may be too contaminated, I'm not sure. I'm going to give it a go. Um, and all I want to do is soften it, soften them a bit. Now, do they enhance the picture? Probably. Hope so. Let's, um, let's just do that a little bit. A little bit of finger painting. So yeah, when I finish off, uh, yeah, if you want to come to my Zoom classes, I've already said that, it's in the thing below. Uh, what else? Um, Hope this helps. Don't forget, when you're painting, stay loose. Be as relaxed as you can. Don't worry about it. It's just a painting. There we are. And I think that really is it for this painting. So, yeah, uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one in, the, in case this has been too terrible. And uh, uh, take care. Bye for now.